Hey everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be sharing my top five tips for quickly progressing as a front-end software engineer. Now, some of these tips are more geared towards beginner developers, and some are more geared towards advanced developers. So hopefully, no matter where you are in this journey, you can take something from one of these tips. And with that said, let's get right into the video. Number one, have a clear plan or a roadmap and stick to it. Now, this does not mean that you need to go spend a bunch of money on some course or on a coding bootcamp or on college classes. Those things can be great for some people, but if you choose to go the free online route, then just make sure you have a plan. How are you going to get from point A to point B? What are the individual steps that you're going to take? And how are you going to achieve the goals of each step? So for example, start with HTML and figure out where are you going to learn HTML from and get pretty good at just HTML and then move on to CSS do the same thing for CSS, and then move on to JavaScript. I would personally focus more on JavaScript than anything else. A truly deep understanding of JavaScript will take you a very long way, and it's going to make learning everything in the future much easier. So if you know JavaScript really well, it's going to be much easier to learn React or Angular or something like that. So that is my advice, is spend a lot of time on JavaScript, but regardless of the exact route or roadmap you choose to follow, just to make sure that you are actually following it and that you're taking it one step at a time. Number two, read the documentation. Have you ever bought some piece of furniture online and it comes in 200 pieces and then there's an instruction manual that's this thick and you're thinking, how am I ever going to finish building this piece of furniture? The same is true with front-end engineering. Only our instruction manual is the documentation and it's going to take a long time to learn. But if you don't read the documentation, so if you don't read the instructions, it's going to take even longer. So read the instruction manual or read the documentation, and you're going to have a much better time actually learning. Now, the documentation that I recommend is going to be the MDN documentation. It's extremely complete, while at the same time being easy to digest and understand. So I think it's a great resource. Now, I don't recommend you read it all at once. It's not a book in the same way that you wouldn't read the instruction manual for building furniture all at once, you would read it one step at a time. So a good way to do this is to take some period of time, maybe a month, and as you're writing code, just look up everything. Whatever you do, act like you don't know how to do it and look it up. And you'll find that you end up on these weird and interesting pages of documentation that you never would have ended up on otherwise, and you end up learning lots of new information. Now you might be saying that this feels inefficient. It's going to take more time to produce the same output, to make the same website, for example. And this is true, it is going to take more time. But if your goal is to learn, don't focus on the output, focus on learning. So focus on the efficiency of learning. And you're going to learn more efficiently if you are looking things up and reading the documentation. It might take you more time to produce the same output, but that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be learning. And if that's your goal, then you shouldn't worry too much about the fact that this is going to be a waste of time in the sense of not having as much output. Number three, do self code reviews. When you work in industry, all of your code gets reviewed. This means that somebody else on your team looks at your code to check to see if there are bugs in it. They check for stylistic issues and just general issues with the code. And you probably won't be able to do this on your personal projects. If you're working alone, there's not going to be anybody to review the code. But what I like to do is self code reviews. I review my own code. So I write some code and then I wait a day or two just so that it's not super fresh in my mind. I forget the fine implementation details and I review it myself. So I go through every line of code and I ask myself, can I convince myself why I wrote this code the way I did? And if the answer to that question is no, then potentially there's a bug and I should look into it. Or potentially I just don't know this piece of code very well. Maybe I got it from Stack Overflow and I don't fully understand it. And in that case, I just need to go read the documentation. But regardless, if I can't convince myself that yes, this is the correct way to do this, then I'm going to go look into it further. And while I do this, I will also be looking for stylistic issues, inconsistencies, things like that, just to improve my overall code quality. And I think over time, this makes you a much better programmer. Number four, start every project with a design. Now, this doesn't need to be a complicated, high fidelity design. It can simply be a drawing on a piece of paper or a whiteboard, but have an idea of what you want the product to look like, 
and what features you want to exist. And you really have an exact feature list that you want to be building. And I think this has three main benefits. So the first is simply that this is how industry works. When you work in industry, you work with designers and project managers, and they might hand you a feature list. They might hand you a physical design of what they want something to look like. And you're going to be expected to build that. So it's good to get experience on your own sort of doing the exact same thing. And second, I actually think this makes the process go faster. And you might be thinking, how is that possible? I'm going to have to do more work to create this design. But when you create the design, you sort of hash out what the features are going to be. So you don't end up going through this process where you build some feature, you realize, oh, actually, I don't want that feature. So you delete it and you've ended up building things that you don't end up using. So I think by having the design, it actually makes things go much more efficiently. And finally, the last thing, and probably the most important, is that it keeps you honest. And what I mean by this is, say you have some feature that you want to build, and you don't know how to do it. If you don't have a feature list, and it was just an idea, you might say, oh, I don't know how to do this, so I'm just going to pivot to something I do know how to do. But if it's on the feature list and you've committed to it, you're going to need to go and figure out how to do that thing. You're going to need to get out of your comfort zone and learn something new. And ultimately, again, if the goal is progressing and learning new things, getting out of your comfort zone and reading more documentation and learning new things is going to be the best way to actually make that progress. Number five, become conversational in UX design. Now, this doesn't mean you need to be a designer and you don't even need to be good at design. Lots of front-end engineers aren't but you should be conversational in it. You should understand design principles. And this is so, so important because front-end engineers work so closely with designers. In a way, we're sort of a bridge between the design team and the engineering team. The design team designs something and we build their user experience and we work with other engineers to build out the rest of that product. So the backend and whatnot. But sometimes there's going to be a disagreement. Maybe the designer wants to build some feature, and you think that this is a bad allocation of engineering resources, it's going to take too much time, and you need to be able to have that discussion. And when you have that discussion, you should be understanding why they want to build the features that they want to build. What is the reasoning behind it? What design principles led them to making the decisions that they made? And when you understand that, you might say, oh, actually, they're right, we need to build this feature. Or maybe it can help you find an alternative that is sort of a middle ground between their feature and being a little bit less work on the engineering side. So it's just super important to understand these design principles. And I think you'll be much easier to work with when you're working with designers. So designers are going to appreciate it a lot. And you're just going to be a more productive front-end engineer. And with that said, that is going to be the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that, I will see you in the next video.